year. Yeah, da, 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 da. Princey boy, Chris, Leenot, Claudio. How was everybody? All right, thanks everybody for uh, contributing towards this and for Lena for putting the playlist together. Donkey Kong Country, some of the greatest, most um, ambient, moody music, very unique that we've heard in uh, gaming, especially starting around you know like the Super Nintendo era when this was coming out. It was fantastic. It was. Um, it was a real breath of fresh air. It was. It not only did the Donkey Kong <clears throat> Country visuals look <clears throat> really uh, progressive, but um, they also they sounded progressive. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I'm getting choked up. Your exercise while watching. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, buddy. Da -da, da -da. Get this going. That was fun. That was Fear Factory from the first Donkey Kong Country song that I stole the uh, ba -ba -dum -ba, boom -ba -dum -ba from. Yeah, I stole it. <clears throat> and I made a whole song around it that I never released. Well, I released a crappy version of it, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get started with first one Donkey Kong rap. Which will have a fun reprise of this near the end. The uh, Queen version. Donkey Kong Rhapsody. Smile when places do, but remnants beware, cause he 
so the DK rap, very uh, very traditional, like late '80s, um, f- very first kind of steps into rap. That real simple beat, that um, big spacing, like uh, the the cadence of that really sounds like, um, I guess like Grandmaster Flash and uh, Run DMC and that kind of stuff. Like even more symptomatic. I'm wondering if um, do you think it's like slightly, 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 slightly problematic that uh, in the past. Um, hey, man. Black people have racially been um, compared to monkeys and primates. And then you have this game about a bunch of sort of like primates and monkeys, chimps. And then their preferred uh, music they all sing together is this rap. Which at the time was like only only black people. It's super fun. I think it works really, really well. And the, the musical theme for the whole game was already set in Donkey Kong Country 1 as like just all kinds of music and ambient music and nothing at all. But it's very, uh, I think now, I think nowadays you would probably, it would get ruined. Anyways, that's the DK Rap. We're going to have the uh, DK Rhapsody, which is an incredible blend of this and Bohemian Rhapsody at the end of it. I'm looking too much into it. Well, it's, I'm an anal- analytical person, you know, see my brain operates on many levels. Um... You'll get there one day. But for North America, too. I think we're just exposed to it more. All right. Who, who's your I don't... And also, it kind of feels like they were setting up. They're like, we could make a million of these games. Look at all these Kongs. But it was kind of a more simpler time where they're like, well, here's Diddy. Diddy was in the first one. Dixie. Here's a whole bunch. Here's the whole crew. Now you would almost look at it more cynically. I would and go, oh, they're just there trying to have... Um, it's like when Universal Movies makes The Mummy and, and they've already planned 10 spin-offs, right? Because they want to be like the Avengers. So, anyways, great little song. Next up is... Oh, where'd my playlist go? My playlist is gone. The Music Show, August 5th. Donkey Kong Country 2 Disco Train. Studio quality HD restoration. That's excellent. So what this guy did was he, uh, um, 
he actually takes the original sounds and the MIDI instructional data, so it plays perfectly. Um, all right, he locates the original audio samples used to create the soundtrack from the keyboard workstations they came from, like a Korg Wave Station or Roland R8. He combines them with the music instruction data ripped from the game, plus a little mixing and mastering to create what the track would have sounded like if it didn't have the 16-bit compression. So this is basically like as authentic as it could sound without any of the limitations, but the same sounds, but just blast it out. So it's very, very cool. So there's a guy named Jammin Sam Miller who does this. He has a he has a Patreon as well. Jammin Sam is his Patreon. If you want to uh, support the work that he does. AC sounds clean, but Nostalgia likes the muzzle, compressed lo-fi sounds. I, I think that actually the Super Nintendo compression was pretty nice. It did have a really, uh, it had a comfort, um, comforting, cozy sound to it. But this is great too. Alright, next up is from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze so this is the Wii U version after they had the uh, comeback of um, of Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii which had the really irritating you had to shake it to do your attack which is horrible because you come up close to somebody you're a millisecond away from an enemy and you have to shake your controller it's not very precise gotta hate shaking controls but this is from Tropical Freeze the Wii U version is called Wingding which David Wise also came back to Composed for Man, a really great, fun track. Has a real kind of air of air of wonder to it. Almost like you're 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 in a, a new country, a new culture, and you're seeing maybe like a, a brand new kind of festival or something you never experienced. I like all the um, sort of organic physical instruments, like the harmonica. There's a sounds like a clarinet or an oboe. A lot of woodwind instruments, and they sound like. They're really being played, unless my ears are fooling me with the MIDI. Pretty believable, though, and expressive. The accordion mixed in with all those kind of like beautiful like synths and keys and rimbas and stuff. This this track ends up becoming like very very dramatic too. It's a very nice long uh, long form that was probably not possible on uh, the Super Nintendo. 
So they're using that technology to increase it in good ways that don't feel sort of needlessly extended. All right. That was great. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Very festive. That's a good way to put it. Northern Europe. Yeah. Yeah, with the... With the um, with that, orc- that accordion sound. Good call. What's this red light above me? That's weird. Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing you can see. Next up is from Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy. I don't have any footage for this. This is Jungle Hijinks. Let's see. the. This is going to be the sort of... The way they were developing the soundtrack for the Super Nintendo stuff, but now having to strip down... And not having all those fun instruments you can play with on a Super Nintendo, trying to play it on a on a Game Boy sound chip, which is closer to what you get on an NES. So let's see what they came up with. Jungle hijinks. Fantastic. That's um, so yeah. They they did a reprise basically of the uh, first theme from Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. Game looks great for being on a Game Boy Color. I don't I don't remember when the Game Boy Color came out. It must come out around like mid '90s or something. But Nintendo's really smart about um. Actually, this is just like a, a, a whole port of it. I mean, the same minecart level, same tracks and everything. Looks like it controls and uh, the jumps and the physics are all there. So pretty impressive to be able to take this into a handheld. Especially Game Boy Color, where Nintendo was always really smart about not not overloading a system with too many features if that was going to, say, kill the battery. I mean, the original Game Boy didn't look great, but you could play Tetris, you could play some simple games on it, and it only took two AA batteries and they lasted forever. Whereas Sega made their Game Gear six AAA batteries. Batteries lasted like two hours. That's, that's a nice looking port. I mean, N- Nintendo's always been pretty guarded with their ports, right? Like, um,. They wanted to make a PC port of Super Mario Brothers 3, and they they uh, came up with sort of like a mock version of it, and sent it to Nintendo, and Nintendo's like, it's not quite there. It doesn't feel like Mario. We're not going to be doing this. And they ended up turning that into Commander Keen. But yeah, this, this sounds fantastic. I mean, the delay on the uh, those channels, all you really reduce to is the Game Boy Percussion, a bass line, and then the, the, the lead melody line, but it's already got so much life in it that it gives you... Uh, enough of, of what the, the song is about and uh, does a great job of, of translating. If you got a good song, you can basically play it on any kind of game hardware and it's going to sound very, very good. Oh, I would imagine your reaction time's got to be really good. I noticed well, even when I was playing Donkey Kong Country uh, 2 today or 1, there were some moments where you press it like a split second too late and you're going to go down into a pit. Whereas a lot of games will kind of give you a bit of leeway there. They don't give as much leeway as I'm used to. All right, next up is... Oh my god, are you ready for this? I'm not even going to introduce it. I'm just going to play it, and I think you're going to get the picture of what it is.
It's it's the way he uses the uh, the rhythm, a lack of like a constant kick, um, and then to create this sort of like slowly descending down. Where he goes with his chords, the kind of sounds he gets that we really hadn't heard on Super Nintendo before. A lot of times, a lot of Super Nintendo tracks sound pretty similar. Um, the the way the a lot of the melodies feel like they're kind of bubbling up. Very yeah, exactly, totally ethereal, timeless. Whoa, 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 whoa. The depths, the distance, the currents, the light fractals break in the surface. It's, uh, yeah, so perfectly nailed. Um, it's a really, really something special. That somebody just embraced what a level was about. And created their own thing, went their own way with it. And it's, uh, you know, there's a reason why it still lives on today and still feels special today. No matter how many times we've all heard this track over and over again, everything about it is perfect. It'd be really cool to see this live with an orchestra, but would it would it still make sense? I think that percussion with like the anvil sounds and the uh, you know that kind of sound that how do you replicate that with an orchestra? This is something that kind of needs to be played with synths. To really get the full effect. Bum, bum, bum. And delay. So, it kind of sounds best on Super Nintendo hardware. What a classic. Alright, next up is going to be... Also from Donkey Kong Country 1, this is Gangplank.
Wow. Welcome, me, Jacob. Yeah, actually, yeah, I mean, it's got such a different um, introduction, really. It almost sounds like kind of a like a title theme or something, you know, or like a like a level select or sort of a mini game piece. And then it just takes a hard right turn into like Mega Man rocking territory with that shuffle. Goes on for quite a while. Like a jungle Mega Man. Or like a Contra. It's more like a Konami Capcom kind of sound to it. But yeah, and this is kind of like buzzsaw blade of a melody. But it has that sort of like video game epic kind of like a Dorian skip. Da, da, Going on a quest fighting adversity but you know they're going to pull through. Yeah, mini game bonus level. I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting those two to be put together and I just recently played this. I think I'm going crazy. Next up from Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, Flight of the Zinger. What a, what a great track. Yeah, it is kind of slightly similar to, um, uh, to the last one, I suppose. It's got kind of like a darkness to it, but sort of like a rising, uh, almost like a classical energy to it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit creepy. You don't really know what it's doing. I think it's a percussion that's along the bottom. It sounds like... Almost like little bugs crawling around. Which is... Um, Yeah, it's a very, very interesting piece. There's just so many unique things that um, David Wise was doing with... I mean, those synth pads coming in. You just didn't hear those in Super Nintendo games. It was... I think it was a really North American way of playing. I just love it. Actually, he was British. That's what it was. The British make the best music, so... That's all it was. All right, next up is from Donkey Kong Country 1, Jungle Ijinx.
Well, the last bit was just basically like kind of an ex extended little outro that was basically um, its own song, really. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think this one is a really nice introduction to the series because it's a lot of the, a lot of games around this time would go with the that sort of like swing, and I think kind of like a swing in a Dixieland fun kind of party. Um, like Mardi Gras atmosphere, I think fits with the the festival, festive tropic kind of feel of a uh, Donkey Kong Country. And but then for it also also have these like kind of ambient drums in the back is a way of like taking it to another layer of a uh, percussion that's just fantastic. Yeah, Forlorn and Lost. It's it's such a fun, <sighs> such a fun combination of like what could just be like more shallow, fun, goofy. Mario Kart type tracks, but they just go somewhere else with them. That is, there's just something deep inside David Wise that he's constantly having a conversation with himself that is just so interesting. All right, next up from Tropical Freeze. What are, what are the instruments going on in there? Is that like a... Not a ukulele, is it? Some kind of ukulele or a tiny little island um, stringed instrument? And then whatever these instruments are, they sound like sort of a, some kind of a wind instrument, like like a tiny saxophone or something? Clarinet, oboe? Definitely gives um, a really super fun... But like thoughtful, cartoony, kind of zany, but cerebral feeling to this. Like you've come across a group of people who are smarter than the average, but are on their own, doing their own thing. You know, like Nintendo fans. Alright, next up is from, I think Donkey Kong Country 2. This is Forest Interlude Restored to HD. Another lean out track.
You know, we're so lucky to have David Wise creating music for um, so many of these games that we've played. I feel a bit selfish that we have them for our own. There's probably so many people that have no idea what they're missing with something like this. What, what kind of music genre do you get this sort of instrumental, worldly, but accessible, but unique blend of the sort of the instruments and the presentation he's doing it. Him and like Uematsu and Koji Kondo and so many of these incredible composers are just, there's such a huge part of the population that is like, would never even think of putting this on, right? And if you were going to show it to them, there's the odd chance that sort of a goofy game drag is going to get in there. But something like this, I mean, I know I know they get a lot of appreciation from us. They're sort of like the new, they're the new classical composers. You know, they're, they're our Beethoven, Rachmaninoff, Bach, Chopin. These like masters of instrumental music that are bringing, that are on like the cutting edge of... Uh, of blending all this. I know there's EDM and electronica and like lo-fi and all that stuff, but it does, it never feels like it has this grasp of just a master of um, musicality. Of course you can meet Jacob, yeah. All right, next up is going to be from Tropical Freeze again. I don't know what song it is. expecting that that's from tropical freeze the latest donkey kong country game not not as sort of like dense and atmospheric and vibey as his other stuff but in terms of like a straight ahead kind of guitar song it still has probably more donkey kong in it than say a lot of songs in that vibe it's still like not straight ahead banging percussion has a bit of a bounce to it not what i would expect not what i would ask for but he has a way of making it pretty interesting. All right, this is from me, Jacob. Mad Jack Battle, Donkey Kong 64. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, sort of a nefarious, um, sort of like a classical uh, feel to it. Evil song, evil witch, nice evil witchy laugh, mustache twirling. I like the arpeggios. Of I think they do a good job of um, expanding it. It's uh, an interesting track. It's, I don't. He kind of went away from, well, at least in this one. From the Super Nintendo tracks tended to have a bit more of like depth to him in, in terms of the sounds he was doing. It's almost like um, the N64 was a little more stock in the sounds that he chose. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting. Bad Jack Battle. Oh, and this is actually Grant Kirkhope. This isn't David Wise. That's why it sounds so different. Like different kind of instrumentation, different styles, different like rhythms and everything. Grant Kirkhope, okay. All right. The other guy. The other Donkey Kong guy. The rare, the other rare guy. All right. Nice contrast. All right. Next up is from... Oh, Diddy Kong Racing. This is Whiz Pig Challenge. <laughs> Diddy Kong Racing I had a lot of fun with when uh, staying with my sister and them having an N64 and all these different games I hadn't played before. And I loved that this, this had like a big hub world to it, and a lot of secrets to it. There were cars, there were planes, there was hover hovercraft. Um, different ideas like you would grab something on the course and you could either use it, you could use it as like a weapon or a shield or a boost, or you could grab another one of the same type because there were three different types of... Uh, pickups on the ground I think kind of like offense defense speed then you can grab a second one you would get an upgraded version of it which I thought was really really neat um and then also there was the uh there was like a boss battle so like you would the final race of the game you have to race against this big giant flying pig who you can see his statue up there and it, that was just such a neat idea it was like such I Still yelling at birds. She's terrified that a hawk is going to eat our cat. Um, I'm really surprised they never took any of those ideas and put them into Mario Kart. Beyond N64, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart, you know, GameCube, Switch, the handhelds. It's like such a way to increase the life of it. And it can't be really that hard to like come up with like a little hub world for you to mess around and then just, um, you know, like bosses here and there. Like, since when did Mario Kart have to be so, such a hardcore racer? <laughs> you know? Seems silly. Okay. Next up is, this is actually from Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Donkey Kong Adventure Jungle Joust, an arrangement of Jungle Japes. 
who I don't know who the composer is on this. The crash crash you're missing at Hubbro. Yeah, they're smart. All right, let's see what's on here. You know, I think your your take on it being sort of the Disney Nintendo live action remake movie has the that feels the most. It does feel like they just up the ante with the most sort of cinematic orchestral style they could. Yeah, nice take on it, for sure. They brought what the original didn't have, and they said this is how you would do it with a live orchestra. This is one way of doing it. All right, next up is another track from Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. What's it going to be? Alpine Incline. Thank you. 
I think this is uh, such a great throwback to his uh, Donkey Kong Country tracks, like the way these rhythms are kind of like spread out, a lot of delay on them, almost kind of like glitch hoppy, um, give that kind of like mystical sound, it's almost like industrial ambience in a way. It's um, fantastic. I mean, if people were hoping for him to continue on what he had done, this is probably the best example of bringing that sound, that composition style from the Super Nintendo into the modern age. And just making it sound a lot bigger, a lot better. It's a really good example of what he does. All right, next up is oh, another gigantic classic that requires no introduction whatsoever. <laughs> Just, I mean, if aquatic ambiance was maybe his masterpiece of the last one, this seems this feels like a continuation of it. You like the Super Smash Brothers version? Well, let's give it a listen, shall we? Oh, stick a brush, Smash Bros. Not a fan so far. I like this. Yeah, I think that this what this version does well is that 
it ups the energy because it's for a fighting game, but it doesn't just go to a generic like poof, scats, poof, scats. It keeps that bit of like a breakbeat. So you got this energy but that's still kind of coming back on itself and is ambient. It doesn't just have a straight on vibe to it. In all three phases of the song so far, they've kept that um, that folding in on itself, that more of a intricately layered rhythm, which I think is very, very, very important. Huh. Now, I don't think you need the violin, but uh, it's an interesting take on it. Better than what I was worried about when I first heard it. All right. Next up is Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. This one's called Scorching Torch. I think this is one of the later ones that was added in. Like, what a way to evoke a lot of, um, obviously this is for some kind of, like, fire level. But even in those kind of, like, wow, wow. Sounds like he's using the guitar talk box again, but it's like the notes have been scorched and burnt. It does kind of have a volcano vibe. A little bit claustrophobic, a little bit kind of, uh, dark and red and fiery. Kind of tribally, kind of oppressive. Some, but still has that David Wise magic that doesn't make it too scary. It's fantastic. All right, next up is Lockjaw Saga from Donkey Kong Country. One... Quite interesting. Yeah, it's got like a, I mean, it's got a very fast tempo to it. It's obviously like a rising, exciting, exciting incident, like something, almost like you've been going along in the game and then maybe somebody comes by and gets kidnapped, you know, and all of a sudden, like, the stakes have been risen. Like, it's been, uh, 
Everything's been increased. It's a lot more urgent, but it still remains... Um, it still remains a bit ambient and interesting and curious. And it, Even though this could sound, on paper, way different than the other stuff that he's made, you just know it's him. But whether it's from the sounds that he uses, the way that he puts them all together, the way that he never commits to like a steady rhythm, that he keeps those rhythms... There's so much space in between his beats, his drum beats. Oh, fantastic. All right, next up is Donkey Kong Land 2 Hot Head Hop. This is for the Game Boy. You know, I play, my little brother had a Game Boy and I had a Game Gear and I remember thinking Tetris was amazing and Tetris Attack was amazing and Super Mario Land was okay. I didn't realize that these Donkey Kong games on the Game Boy were so impressive looking. I mean, you can just, from looking at it, like, yeah, that looks like the jumping and everything is right on and uh, the way they handle, like, the animation of it is fantastic. Yeah, you wash out the background so now you needs less detail and power to render it. But it looks like it's... it looks like a pencil drawing. It looks really, really detailed for what you're getting on a Game Boy. And they just put everything into those characters. And they look fantastic. Like, I can't believe the movements they have. All the frames for a Game Boy. See, Nintendo was just the geniuses of work with what you've got and you can make it impressive. And then this track, obviously, it just has so much space and beauty and goes so many places. Using that little Game Boy percussive loop, he manages to get his, his, his sound across. Just stunning. Alright, next up is... Donkey Kong Country 3 Cascade Capers.
really stunning, stunning opening to it. Same kind of, um, same kind of feels as other ones, but also feels like it's, um, that. Da -da -da. It's definitely a, a callback to some of his other, other tracks. A little different because it, it's, it seems to, um, be a little more, not one dimensional, but more focused on kind of an overall sound of instruments. I feel like it's just kind of, it's taking these instruments for more of like a the same kind of timbre or the same sort of like you know frequency it's kind of like high pitched I don't know if it's trying to evoke a certain level or if the whole soundtrack is like that but it's not as kind of meaty and thick and dense and as the other ones it's a lot different it feels more like 90s dance music as opposed to the first two tracks just kind of being the first two game soundtracks just being David Wise you know Okay, that was very interesting. I'm glad we had that on here, just for like some variety and... It's really nice. It sounds more sci-fi. Alright, next up, the Donkey Kong Country theme. Next up is going to be from our new friend, me, Jacob. So, Jacob, every Wednesday we do our top 20 favorite video game tracks from a certain theme. It could be Donkey Kong. It could be Mario. It could be the year 2012. It could be JRPGs. Next up is your track, my friend. In a snowbound lane from Donkey Kong Country 2. This is bloody gorgeous. Thank you. 
Is this the real life? Is this just in the sea? Got in the land slide. No escape from reality. Open for eyes. Look up to the skies and see. He's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally back to kick some. All right, they're finally here performing for you. That's fantastic. Thanks to Kazi for, for showing that to me. That is quite the meme. All right, so next week is going to be uh, Towns. Sewers and overworlds, and it doesn't have to be JRPG, it could be uh, whatever. I don't think I have uh, the ability to stream anything else right now, so I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll be back with music tonight at 7 30 p.m. on my Matthew Favai channel on YouTube, Twitch. Facebook. I think I'm on DLive. Okay. Oh, crap. I don't... Uh, don't be taking away my life. Snowbound Land. What a what an amazing track. Let's end off that beautifulness. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, 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 everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lena, for organizing it. Thank you, Claudio, Chris, Prince, me, Jacob, Felix, Everybody that uh, participated, chatted, added to it. Fantastic. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> Can't wait to hear those sewer themes. So, um, me, Jacob, just uh, join our Discord. There should be a link here. And uh, you can nominate five of your favorite tracks that are within the theme in our Discord. Under the category Music Show Nominations. Bye for now. Bye 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 for now. Bye 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 for now. Bye 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 bye.
Thank you.